So Joseph also went up from, Naz from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem. The t to the town of David, because it belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to a firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. much more than words can say, but they also capture, capture only a moment in time. And so we want to take these Instagram pictures and, and kind of spread out the story a little bit and look and see what else was going on to get to that picture. How many of you have an Instagram account? Let's see that again now. All right, a few more than the early service. Basically, it's a, it's a social network, a way for people to share with one another through pictures. You take a picture, you put it up, and you put just a few words or a sentence with that to say what that picture is. And that's how you communicate with one another, is through pictures. And so we're going to check out Mary and Joseph's Instagram page, their social network. And we're going to look at five different uh, Instagrams of theirs. Now, each one here is going to have a couple pictures that go together. Uh, but Instagram number one, we'll start right there, is that an angel visits Mary. Okay, so can you picture that in your mind? When, when I say an angel visits Mary, do you have a picture of that that, that comes to mind? I bet you do. You, and you're probably not playing a video. You're probably, probably getting just a picture, a snapshot in your mind. Well, let's see how the Bible paints this picture for us or, or does the snapshot for us. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, what was the sixth month? The sixth month was of Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Remember our map from last week. Up here is Galilee. Down below that is Samaria. Down below that is Judea, where Jerusalem and Bethlehem are. Okay? So this is Nazareth up here in the area of Galilee. 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name, you know what her name is? Was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Wow! How can this be, Mary said, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born to you will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you've said. Then the angel left her. I mean, that's a true Instagram. There was no warning. There was no preparation or anything. Boom! Mary, here it is. This is what's going to happen. I mean, it, it's only that much space it takes up in Scripture. About the size of a picture, right? Was there anything that God could have done to have prepared Mary for what was going to take place? I mean, is there anything that could prepare you for the birth of your first child or adoption of a first child? Um, you just, you, there, there really isn't. I mean, you can read books. You can have nieces and nephews. But until that one is your own, it's just different, isn't it? And there's really nothing that can fully prepare you for it, but you can kind of a little bit. But in this instance... There, I don't think there was anything God could have done to have prepared Mary for what was going to take place, and it took place in an instant. It was a true Instagram. Consider Samuel or John the Baptist. They grew up with parents knowing that they would be special servants of God. But Mary, she's a Jane Doe. She's not known by anyone for anything. Any more than anyone else living in those days. Known only by those in her family and her immediate community. She wasn't the prom queen. She wasn't the head cheerleader or captain of the softball team or the debate team. She wasn't a scholar or born in a wealthy family, as far as we know any of those things. But let me ask you, who is the most known woman in the history of the world? Well, you say, Mary, let's see. According to studies, and one of those studies today being who is most searched on the Internet. In, in other words, because they're the most famous, right? If they're searched for the most, they're the most famous. Uh, one of these I didn't know. I'm going to give you the top ten current most famous women through history. I mean, how current society perceives it. Freda Kahlo, Mexican painter. The rest of them I think you'll know Number nine, Mother Teresa of Calcutta went to India to serve the poor. This one I knew would be on the top ten. Oprah Winfrey, talk show host, one of America's most successful business people. Joan of Arc, number seven, burned at the stake after she helped restore the king of France to his throne. Number six, Emily Dickinson, revolutionized poetry with her style of verse. I hadn't thought about this one, but it makes sense. Number five, Diana, Princess of Wales. Captured the hearts around the world with, at least at first, was her fairy tale romance. Number four, Anne Frank. Young Jewish girl who kept a diary during the time she and her family were hiding from the Nazis. Number three, Cleopatra, who was the last pharaoh of Egypt. Had infamous liaisons with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony while trying to keep Egypt out of Rome's clutches. Number two, those of you who grew up kind of through the 50s and 60s, uh, Marilyn Monroe. Actress who was discovered while working in a World War II defense plant, actually. Number one, who would be the most famous? Who do you think? Am I going to say Mary? 
Would that be me? Uh, you people who sang in choir over here during the first service go, oh, you better be quiet. The number one most searched for person on the internet, the number one uh, most recognized female in the world right now is a singer and sometimes actress. Her name is Madonna. Still, really. I, I know, that's what I would say. But see, here's God's humor. Because Mary is left off of this list. And obviously, you and I both know that throughout world history, she would be the world's most famous person, right? So who did I just say was number one? Madonna. Just, uh, thank you, Jim. You see where it's going. Not Madonna, which that is, that's who's on this list, but the Madonna. The Madonna is an artistic representation of who? Mary. The word is from the old Latin, ma, donna, my lady. No image permeates Christian art as much as the Madonna and child. And I didn't know this part, that the Madonna in art terms is applied specifically to an artwork in which Mary, with or without the infant Jesus, is the focus and the central figure of the picture. So it is, the Madonna is about Mary, not just Mary, and Jesus. The earliest such images date from early Christian church or found in the catacombs of Rome. Representation of Mary became more common after she was proclaimed the God-bearer at the Council of Ephesus in 431. For over a thousand years, the Madonna was the most often produced pictorial artwork. Why did God choose this average girl from an average town to be the mother of God's son? This, this girl who wouldn't have known what was going to happen, who couldn't have been prepared for it, who not very many people know. Why didn't God choose some king's wife to bear God's son? Some intelligent, wealthy person, somebody of noble stature. Why didn't God do that? Why did God choose Mary? I mean, I'm sure some people who believed it was God said, hey, Mary? Why Mary? Well, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, following, give us a little insight as to why God did this. Because God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast. In the Lord. God shows forth his great power and his majesty by having his son be born of this quiet virgin in this little town, virtually unknown. A picture of Mary is a picture of the love and the power of God. What an awesome Instagram that is. Let's look at Instagram number two. So the first is that the um, the angel visits Mary. Secondly, is that Mary visits Elizabeth. We talked about that a little bit last week, but we left most of the Mary part out, so we're going to look at that now. Luke 1, 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and in a loud voice, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. I don't know how often you've looked at those words and thought about those words and realized how God specifically chose those words for Mary. We'll look at it a little closer in a moment. Thank you. And Mary said, verse 46, and Mary said, and, and this has been reprinted and sung and done all kinds of things with these words, the Magnificat. 
Mary's response to what Elizabeth has just shared with her. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he's been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Now God chose to confirm in Mary what he had revealed to her. Remember last week I talked about how at the beginning of November 1974, I accepted Christ. At the end of 1974, I was at a youth convention where I heard John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, you'll know Jesus and Jesus will set you free from sin. And that verse confirmed in me what had already taken place. Knowing and hearing that verse, which has become my life verse, um, made sure what had taken place in my life. It helped explain what had taken place in my life. It had given me some more knowledge and wisdom and understanding about what had taken place in my life. When I accepted Christ, we got in the car to go home, and it was an hour drive home, and I remember somebody said to me, said, well, how do you feel? Well, I don't know how I feel. I feel good, but I, I don't really know what all this means. I simply know that Jesus became real to me. That's all I know that Jesus has become real to me, that he is who he said he is, and I've, and I've just put my trust in him, but I don't know very much about what that means. And later that month, it was confirmed, and many other times since, God has used ways to confirm things to me. In fact, think about churches that do infant baptism. What do they call the class that you go through when you get a little bit older? Confirmation. To confirm what's taken place in your life. Right? And so God used this visit with Elizabeth to confirm things for Mary. Now, our third Instagram is the angel in a dream visits Joseph. Okay, so the angel visited Mary. That's the first picture. Second Instagram picture is that Mary visits Elizabeth. And the third one is going to be uh, that the angel visits Joseph. But I want to stop. I want to stretch out the picture a little bit. I thought about some things that I've never really thought about before. Because they are in our mind just these Instagram pictures typically. I don't think we see a lot of the Christmas story in video. I really do think we see it more like in a photo album, in an Instagram social networking site kind of thing. But I want to I want to stretch out video a little bit. And I want to focus on Joseph's song. Now, when did Mary tell Joseph Well, the angel told, but, but before that, Mary at some time did, because the angel comes and says, this is what's happening now. That causes him to reconsider, right? Because he had thought about it, and he was going to divorce her quietly, yes? Uh, and then he reconsiders. In fact, let me read that scripture to you, uh, and we'll keep talking about it. Matthew 1, 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph before they came together. She was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what was said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, will give birth to a son. They'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary home to be his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. When did Joseph find out? Here's the picture that we have, typically. The angel comes and visits Mary. Mary goes and tells Joseph, 
Joseph is going to divorce her quietly, but instead an angel comes to him in a dream, and uh, so he's going to take her home as his wife, and they go to Bethlehem, right? Well, wait a minute. She went to see Elizabeth, right? Where is Elizabeth? She is in the hill country of Judea, so Mary is up here in the Galilee area, right, in Nazareth. She goes through Samaria all the way down to the land of Judea, which is where Bethlehem is. So she didn't go to Bethlehem, but to some town, some hill town in the land of Judea. She stays there for three months. She goes back. She's there for six months. Then they make the trek all the way back down to Bethlehem. Okay, so that stretched out a little bit, didn't it? That, that changes our picture a little bit to, to realize the timing that takes place. Did Mary tell Joseph, and then she went to visit Elizabeth? Or did she go visit Elizabeth and come back three months later and tell Joseph? The scripture doesn't make it clear, except I refer you back to Luke 1.39. This is right when the angel tells Mary. Okay, the angel comes and tells Mary, the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you, the Holy Spirit will come and conceive in you. The Holy Spirit. And when did that happen? When did the conception take place? When the angel spoke to her? Later that night? Somewhere in there, in that immediate time, we get the, the understanding the idea that it that took place right then. And what was Mary's response? Luke 139. At that time, when this happened to her, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. I wonder if that doesn't suggest that Mary needed confirmation. Why did the angel, in the midst of telling her that she's going to have a baby, say, oh, by the way, your great-great-aunt, or whatever she is, I mean, she, it's a relative, but she's much older, Mary's this teenager, and Elizabeth's much older, that this older relative here is going to have a baby. Why did the angel tell her that? And did Mary believe it? Because, you know, Mary very likely might not even heard of it, because what did we learn last week about Elizabeth and Zachariah? When she became pregnant, when Elizabeth became pregnant, what did she do for the next five months? She remained a seclusion. They didn't put this out on Facebook or send Instagram pictures or get on Twitter or anything else. They stayed in seclusion. They stayed away from everybody. It wasn't until the sixth month when the angel came to Mary and Mary hurried down that all of a sudden things began to break open. And not only does Mary get to see this Again, great aunt, whatever she is, who was barren, she sees, she physically sees, because now she's in her six months, that she's pregnant. That alone confirms it. But wait a minute. Elizabeth, who doesn't know anything, when just with the greeting of Mary's voice, of, hey, the baby in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed are you, favored one. And how is it that the mother of my Lord should come and visit me? Talk about confirmation class. Wow! What does that do for Mary? That certainly creates within her some strength. It confirms the spiritual experience in reality. Instead of this ethereal being or, or however the angel appeared to her, this is her relative who says, I know that you're the mother of God's son. I know that that baby growing in, by the way, Mary doesn't know the baby's growing in her for sure. She doesn't feel it yet. She's not showing yet. It's not kicking yet. But what about three months later? She spent three months with Elizabeth, and just before John the Baptist was born, she goes back to Galilee. What if at this moment is when she shares with Joseph? Because now she's showing, she can't hide, starting to show a little bit. She can't hide it. She also knows. And she spent three months with the most godly, most wonderful people in the world, Zechariah and Elizabeth, and have talked about who John is. And she's been taught and and given wisdom by these people. And, and so now she knows beyond the shadow of a doubt. Praise God for the angels and the messenger who gives the word. And praise God for those confirmations that come along. And so, I don't know. I'm just throwing those out as possibilities. Understand that. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the way it happened. I'm saying this is a possibility. And so let's just see the video a little more of the story, the reality of the story. Do you believe that this woman was a virgin? When she conceived, if you don't, Christmas means nothing. God coming means nothing. If she wasn't a virgin, she was. At whatever point she shares with Joseph, he has this 
dream. He falls asleep and has this dream. And in the dream, an angel appears to him and talks to him and tells him what we just read. Now, with Joseph, so we get the picture of Joseph, and he, he finally comes to understanding, and he takes Mary home to be his wife. Was he with her? Was Zachariah and Elizabeth? Doesn't sound like it, but either from her home or wherever, he takes her home to make her his wife. Mary gave birth to Jesus, right? That's cool. We know that. That's why she's the most famous woman in all of history. But Joseph was the first human being to speak his name because he named him Jesus. God gave Joseph that joy, that privilege to call out the name Jesus, to write on his birth certificate, his name is Jesus. You know what Jesus means? God's salvation. He got to name him God's salvation. Why? Because of his faith. Because he listened to the messenger. He saw Mary. He believed her. And he named him Jesus. Well, the fourth picture. The Instagram. Mary and Joseph visit Bethlehem. So the angel visited Mary. Mary visits Elizabeth. The angel visits Joseph. And now Mary and Joseph visit Bethlehem. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, basically so they could pay their taxes. Everyone went to his own town to register, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth. Now let's go up here, all the way through Samaria in Galilee there, through Samaria to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, where David was from. Because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. This is the picture of all pictures. I would guess that no picture in human history has been drawn, painted, sculpted, built, dramatized, professionally or with an amateur four-year-old anymore than Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Look behind me. You see it there in our manger scene with these four foot tall, or however tall they are. And you see it all over the place. You've drawn it yourself. The pictures you've drawn have hung on refrigerators. And depending on how old you are, they're probably stuck in a box or a folder somewhere uh, that your parents still have. Or your grandchildren have done it and you've put them up. I can't imagine any picture, anything being drawn more or, or represented in art more than Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus. These few verses of scripture have created the world's most popular Instagram, as it should be. Because it is the picture of John, chapter 1, verse 14. And we look at verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But verse 14 says what? The Word became... Flesh. That's the incarnation. That's what the incarnation of God in the world means. God became flesh in Jesus Christ. It's also a picture of John 3.16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. You know, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist or a computer guru. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent, it, sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. Nice pictures, right? These Instagram pictures, these four pictures we said. Nice pictures. So what? What's it mean? I mean, the first one was uh, an angel visits Mary. Second, Mary visits Elizabeth. Third, angel visits Joseph. And the fourth, Mary and Joseph visit Bethlehem. They give birth to the baby Jesus. Well, there is a fifth. There is a fifth, and maybe the most important, because those other ones, the reason they happened was because of the fifth Instagram, where Jesus visits you. Emmanuel. God with us. Revelation chapter 3.20, here I am, Jesus says, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. 
And if you open the door, I'll come in and eat with you and you with me. I'll live with you now, you'll live with me then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be in your daily life, you're going to be in my eternal life. The great theologian, Billy Joel, helps us understand this. <laughs> On his daughter's 12th birthday, she was in New York City, and the pop musician was in Los Angeles. He phoned her that morning, apologizing for his absence, which he had probably done on many of her birthdays, but told her to expect the delivery of a large package before the end of the day, and of course he could afford anything. The daughter answered the doorbell that evening to find a very tall, brightly wrapped box. She tore it open and outstepped her father, fresh off the plane from the West Coast. Can you imagine her surprise? I mean, what did she want? What did she probably want more than anything except to be spending time with her father? You know, he could have sent all the gifts in the world, but it wouldn't have meant as much as him being there. It might have represented him, but it wasn't him. God coming to the world. He could have sent all kinds of things like prophets and teachers and laws, but it wasn't him. It wasn't until he incarnated in the person of Jesus that we could truly understand. Here's a story about a modern man. One of us, not a Scrooge, but a kind, decent, mostly good, generous to his family, upright in his dealings with others. But he did not believe in all about this incarnation stuff that churches proclaim at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense to him. And he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just could not swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. I'm truly sorry to distress you, honey, he told his wife, but I'm not going to church with you on Christmas Eve. I feel like a hypocrite. That would be much easier for me to stay home. But I'll wait up for you. You go. And he stayed and they went. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier. Then he went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. And minutes later, he was startled by something thudding at the window. Then another, and another. At first, he thought someone must be throwing snowballs against his living room window. Well, when he went to the front door, he found a flock of birds huddled, huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm, and in despite of search for shelter, they had tried to fly right through his large landscape window. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. He remembered, uh, you know, that the barn would be a good place out back to put them where his children had their pony stable. It would provide a warm shelter if he could direct the birds to it. So he quickly put on his coat and his galoshes, and he trampled through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the door wide, and he turned on the light. But the birds did not come in. He figured food would entice them, and so he hurried back to the house, and he got some breadcrumbs. He sprinkled them on the snow right from where they were, making a trail all the way to the yellow-lighted, wide-open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flap hopelessly around in the snow. He tried catching them, and he tried shooing them into the barn by walking around them and waving his arms at them. But instead, they just scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted barn. Then he realized they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. How can I... Do that. Any move I make toward them would frighten them and confuse them. They'd just not follow. They'd not be led or shooed because they feared him. If only he could become a bird, he thought to himself. If only I could be a bird and mingle with them and speak their language and tell them not to be afraid and show them the way to be safe, to get inside the warm barn but I'd have to become one of them so they could see and hear and understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears high above the sound of the wind. He stood there listening 
to the bells play a deste fidelis. Listening to the bells, pealing the glad tidings of Christmas. He dropped to his knees and prayed to receive the incarnated word of God in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, of whom he had been frightened and afraid and disbelieving. Now he believed that God had become one of us so that we could know him. What does your incarnational Christmas Instagram look like? How is Jesus real in your life right now? You, like Mary, are an average person. Like Mary and Elizabeth, you can have your faith confirmed. Like Joseph, you can walk in that faith and experience amazing things. Like Mary and Joseph, you get to see the birth of Jesus in a humble place, your own heart. But how does that picture look like in your life? What are you waiting for? It's time to post your Instagram. It's time to get on your social network and share what that picture looks like. Looks like not to the whole world. You, you don't need to post your picture to the whole world. Most people aren't interested in your picture. All right. But there's 8 to 15 people, what we call your oikos. Your close relatives, your friends, your co-workers. Maybe that person that serves you at a restaurant that you go to every week that you've got to know. They're the ones who would be interested in your Instagram picture. Can you describe what your picture looks like of Jesus in you? That's your Instagram to be posted. That's your Christmas picture. What does Jesus look like in your life right now that others can see? Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you for the pictures that we saw up on the screen, the pictures that we saw in our mind the video that we stretched out a little bit, just to realize that this wasn't something that is just about the Christmas season. This is real. This really happened. These were real people. Mary was a real virgin. Joseph was a real guy who was concerned about what his fiance was up to. These were real messengers of God that came to them. And yet they still needed things confirmed. Thank you for confirming it through Elizabeth to Mary. Thank you for confirming it through Mary actually being pregnant to Joseph. Thank you for confirming it to both of them after Jesus is born through Simeon and Anna. Thank you for confirming it to us through Sunday school teachers and preachers and parents and grandparents and friends for confirming it to us directly through your word for confirming it to us Lord who have been visited by angels for confirming it to us by your Holy Spirit who speaks deep within us thank you for confirming it within us today Lord God if there's anybody here who for the very first time is putting their trust and their faith in you I pray that you'll, you'll encourage them Lord to have it confirmed by going to our prayer room and having somebody pray with them Lord, so that they know. So, so it's not a question. So it's a, a, a real thing, Lord. It becomes real to them. When they can speak it out and say, yeah, today, I don't know all what it means, but I'm putting my trust in Jesus. Today, I believe that he is the one who came. I believe he was born of a virgin. I believe he walked on this earth and he died for my sins. That he came to forgive me of my sins. And that's why God sent him. And I accept that gift of forgiveness today. And I look forward to my eternal life with him. God, don't let anybody leave this place without knowing that. Knowing that Jesus is real. And he's living in them in this moment. Simply by the confession of faith. And the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd respond to that invitation to, to make Jesus real, to ask him into your life. As we sing our closing song, walk through this door right over here. And somebody from our prayer team will be in the prayer room to pray with you. Just let them know. Just go and say, hey, I'm just putting my trust in Jesus right now. I don't know what it means for, for sure, except that I'm forgiven. And I want this eternal life. They'll know how to 
pray for you. If there's some other need in your life right now, maybe you're one of those that's feeling loneliness in the midst of a lot of people. So, you know, I just need somebody to pray for me that, that I'll have peace this Christmas. Or you want to pray for some of these folks who are going through a lot of medical things. Join with others. You're welcome. Hear the prayer. Let's stand together as we sing of the fact that Jesus made a way and made through a cross. Yeah.